Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I've been doing a little bit of typing during these last few weeks and months, and it turns out the two machines that I've been using more often than any other happens to be my 1970s French-made Hermes 3000 and mid-1950s Smith Krona Silent Super. The Hermes has a snap-on clamshell lid. The Silent Super has the holiday case. Uh, there are two different kind of machines style-wise. They have a lot of the same features, but some differences. But they're both pretty highly regarded, and uh, personally I do regard both of these as really great machines, and I thought it would be a good opportunity. Let's just compare them and see what makes these two machines good. and. Is one of them better than the other, or are they just different? Well, first of all, to get the Hermes out of its case, it's just a matter of undoing the latch on the lid and setting it aside, and there it is, ready to go. But uh, the Silent Super is a little bit more involved. We have to first open up the lid. And then there is the little release lever down here that releases it from the holiday case. And of course now the trick is you have to pick the typewriter up, do something with it temporarily while you close the case like that. So certainly two different style machines. The grayish dark green 1950 style metal body and the plasticky but brighter colored 1970s. Well, before we talk about the features, I thought it would be good to start off with talking about the condition of each one of these machines as individual examples. This Silent Super, body panels are okay. There's a little bit of wear around the front here, uh, front corners where you would expect the textured paint to be worn off. The biggest thing I think is on the paper bale, there's supposed to be a finger here that protrudes that helps you flip it up with your right finger, and that's broken off. Uh, other than that, that's really about the only thing broken or abnormal about this machine. It has all new rubber. Platen roller, uh, pressure feed rollers, and even the paper bale rollers have recently been replaced last year, uh, 2019, uh, by JJ Short and Sons. The Hermes 3000 here, the background on this, we bought this from Brown and Smith typewriter repair back about 2007 maybe. A few years later I decided the, to go ahead and do some more cleaning on it and I discovered that so what happens is you have an upper and a lower body shell the body is in two plastic halves and there are these plastic clips that hold the upper and the lower together in the front and I discovered what had happened was somebody, I'm assuming Brown, had glued the front corners uh, on the upper and lower together. The reason why is the clips were actually broken. And so once I discovered that, I couldn't take the body apart without uh, taking a knife and separating that glue joint. Once I did that, I was able to take the chassis out of the body and service it. But when I put it back together uh, and typed on it, these two body shells would rattle badly. And so I had some of these little green brackets that I had that came in a kit with, it was a little Class F audio amplifier, uh, stereo amplifier, and it came with a bunch of little miscellaneous brackets for mounting it in different applications. And these two little curved green brackets, I put some uh, foam underneath it, and I put some long bolts, and I drilled two holes in the bottom shell and put these two rubber feet. So it serves not only to hold the top and the bottom together so they don't rattle, but it actually acts like a little front set of rubber feet. That's the only issue other than also, and I just noticed this recently, the right side carriage cover on the right side of the carriage, it's cracked in two places. So that probably needs to be glued back together, but that's really more cosmetic than anything else. So, you know, considering the age of these typewriters, that's not really too bad. They're both great machines, but in different ways. Okay, so as we compare these machines, first of all, I did a comparison of the Silent Super against my Royal Quiet Deluxe back in episode 212. I also did an overview of the Silent Super back in episode 194, so you could refer to those two episodes if you want to see different comparisons there. The weight of both of these, well, I don't have an accurate scale that weighs uh, at that range, but 
uh, the Hermes is about a half a pound heavier than the Silent Super. My old scale, which is probably the same age as this, uh, weighs the Silent Super at 13 pounds approximately, and this is about 13 and a half. So the Silent Super, even though it's metal and a little smaller, it's actually lighter than the Hermes 3000, which is kind of interesting. Uh, as far as style, obviously, the external appearance, the Silent Super is metallic, you know, all metal body panels. Hermes 3000 of this era certainly exudes more of a plasticky 1970s feel to it. Okay, typefaces. As far as the typeface on these particular machines, this one is uh, Elite, which is 12 characters per inch. The Hermes is 4 characters per centimeter, which it comes out to, in terms of inches somewhere between 11 and 12. Line spacing selector, since we're up here on the carriage, so the Hermes 3000 has one, one and a half, and two line spacing, whereas the Silent Super is one, two, and three line spacing. And uh, I should point out that the Silent Super does indicate one, two, three. The Hermes does say one, one and a half, and two. But some typewriters, notably the Olivetti's, might say one, two, three, but they're actually one, one and a half, and two. And then what you can tell is if you set it on the single line spacing, if it makes only one click, it is a one, two, three machine. Whereas on the Hermes, you set it to one, and it makes two clicks, one, two. And that makes it a half space machine, so that middle position is one and a half, not two. Okay, so the ribbon selector, the color selector, the bichrome setting on the Smith Corona Silent Super, it's over here on the right. It is top, stencil, and bottom, which is blue, white, and red. On the Hermes, it is a little more complicated. You have a white setting on top, which is stencil, then blue, which is the top of your ribbon, then yellow, which is the middle of the ribbon, and then red, which is the bottom of the ribbon. So there's four positions, stencil, top, middle, and bottom of the ribbon. And uh, I find myself on the Hermes when I'm flipping back and forth between the top and the bottom of the ribbon to do red and black. It's easy to flip it up and hit the red, but if you flip it all the way down like that, you actually are at the stencil position and it won't make an imprint at all. So you have to sort of go down and then up one click to get back to your top of the ribbon or the black position. Um, another difference, so both of these machines are key set tabulator. So on the Silent Super, you have your clear and your set tab keys over here. The tab itself is here. On the Hermes, you have the tab set and clear is here, and the tab button is here. What the Hermes has that the Silent Super doesn't have is a all clear button. It'll clear all the tabs at once, right? So that is one of the big tab differences. As far as the touch regulator, on the Silent Super, it is under the hood, and it's right here. That is the touch setting. On the uh, Hermes, though, here is the touch regular. It goes between one and four, and I usually like to type it about a touch of two. That's my own personal liking there. Touch regulator is a little bit easier to access on the Hermes than it is on the Smith Corona. The Silent Super has three rubber paper bale rollers, whereas the Hermes only has two. But the Hermes paper bill rollers are larger in diameter, and also because uh, the Hermes has a card guide, a plastic card guide, which fits nice and tightly close to the platen. What it means is when you thread paper through the machine on the Hermes, it will feed directly underneath the paper bill rollers without you having to lift it up. Whereas on the Silent Super, it'll sometimes hang up a little bit, and I have to flip it up a little bit to get the paper to go through. So it's a little quicker feeding the paper through the Hermes. So obviously the Smith Corona does not have a plastic card guide. It has these two little fingers right here, but not a more modern card guide with a larger size like the Hermes has. They both have the line spacing clutch. So in the uh, Smith Corona, you have the pull-out button right here on the left knob, and you also have the lever here. This one here is the temporary adjustment for the line spacing, and this clutch here is the permanent one. The Hermes has a pull-out clutch adjustment. That is a permanent adjustment. It'll change the line spacing, but there's no temporary adjustment on the Hermes. Keyboard layout. Well, this, this particular era of Smith Corona Silent Super was uh, the 1950s, so it's lacking the number one and the 
exclamation mark and it's also lacking the plus and the equals which the Hermes has here and here. But other than that, the keyboards layout wise are all identical. I mentioned earlier that the uh, Smith Corona comes in a holiday case, whereas the Hermes has a clip-on plastic lid with handle. As far as the dimensions of the typewriters when they're not in their case, uh, the Smith Corona is smaller. It has a depth from front to back of 12 and 3 8 inches, a width of 12 and 3 quarters, a height of 5 and a half, whereas the Hermes is 13 inches, 13 and 3 quarter deep, and 13 inches wide, and about 6 and 3 eighths high. So yeah, the Hermes is a bigger machine, no doubt about it. But it also weighs more, which is interesting, even though it has a plastic appearance to it, that belies its excessive weight, which probably implies that they put more of the weight into the mechanics of the chassis itself, and that would be a good presumption. The Smith Corona is a full space machine, meaning if you press the space bar down, it moves a full space, and when you release it, nothing happens. Right? Some typewriters are half space machines. You push it down and it goes a half space and you release it and it goes the other half space. On this particular Hermes 3000, and I think it's true with my other Hermes 3000 that I had, this is almost like a half space machine, but it really is like a third and two thirds, meaning that if you press the space bar down, it goes about a third of the way and you release it and it goes the two thirds. X uh, further distance. Let me unlock the carriage, that would help. Oh yeah, this gets to the other difference. The carriage unlocking on the Hermes is a little fiddly. Uh, there is a lever down here, you have to hold the, hold the uh, carriage release down and pull this lever. Whereas on the uh, Smith Corona, you just, uh, when it's locked like that, you just pull it to the right and it unlocks it. So definitely a lot easier to unlock and lock the Smith Corona. But anyways, here, so spacing. It's like a third and two thirds. You push it down, it barely moves and release it and it goes the rest of the way. So it's sort of almost like half space machine, but not really because it's not truly half space in terms of being able to insert missing characters in between words. The Smith Corona has an end of page indicator on the left side of the platen and the Hermes does not. And as I mentioned earlier, of course, the carriage locking and unlocking is really fiddly on the Hermes. It's really easy on the Smith Corona. And this might be a good time to also mention that the controls on the uh, Hermes here, you might think that this lever here is the carriage a release lever that enables you to manually move the carriage. That's not true. That's actually your margin setting. And it's like the uh, Royal uh, Quiet Deluxe Magic Margin, where if you, wherever the carriage is positioned, if you pull this lever, it's going to move the right margin all the way to that position. So it's easy to get your margins messed up. No, this white button pushed in is the carriage release. So it is non-intuitive and it's easy to press the margins by mistake. Now the Hermes does have these red ribbon indicators that tells you where the margin is and if that system is working properly, which it is on my machine, you can indeed move the margins different places like this. Uh, it's a little fiddly because you have to hold the carriage release button down, hold the pl the platen knob, and with another finger hold the margin adjustment to get it to change. So it's a little fiddly, but it is nice having the indicator there. On the other hand, the Smith Corona has a very simple, elegant push and slide system, and the indicator is right here on the scale. So uh, it gives you the same kind of information on the Smith Corona with a lot less mechanical complexity. So one thing that the Smith Corona gives you is a manual ribbon reverse lever and this I don't know if this feature was retained in the later versions of the Silent Super. The reason why I say that is because this earlier version of the Silent Super also has these two paper fingers for the left and right edges of the paper and this is a carryover from the 1930s and 40s Smith Coronas. I don't think the later ones had that. Uh, again a manual uh, ribbon reversing from the front whereas on the uh, Hermes to re manually reverse the ribbon and you're going to have to pull the cover off and flip the levers this way.
That shouldn't really be an issue though, because if you have a properly working ribbon reversing system, you should never need to manually reverse it. Okay, this gets to one of the other big huge differences between these two typewriters. Of course, this is kind of an unfair advantage for the Smith Corona, but the Smith Corona is one of the few typewriters, probably the only one that I know of, that has a platen that can be easily removed by the operator. Uh, you pull out the clutch lever, you flip this lever, and you can pop out the whole platen and clean it underneath and all that. Whereas, of course, the Hermes is typically like most other brands of typewriters. In order to take the platen out, you're going to have to totally disassemble the knobs and all that to get it out. So the location of the margin release and the tab key on the Smith Coronas on the right and the backspace key being on the left indicated by a back arrow. By the way, this particular typewriter, the backspace key is actually from a different machine. It is almost the identical color, but you can tell it's a different shape entirely. Uh, okay, so for the Hermes, on the other hand, all of those controls are up in the top row, which is kind of interesting. Backspace here, of course, your tabs here, margin release, and the big main tab button here. I don't, however, find the, the Hermes layout to be as ergonomic as the Smith Corona layout. I just find it more natural to have the backspace to the left and have the margin release right next to the right shift key. It just seems more natural. So here's another difference with the Smith Corona. It has the keys that stay flat throughout their entire travel. So the, the top of the key cap is staying f horizontal. And also, if you look at the motion of your fingertip, your fingertip kind of traces an arc like this. Well, the key cap makes that same subtle arc. It starts in the front, midway through the stroke, it moves to the rear, and then it comes back a little bit to the front near the bottom of the stroke. So they're, they're trying to make the motion of the key caps to be an, in alignment, in agreement with the natural motion of your fingers. Whereas with the Hermes, it is a simple linear movement up and down. And the keycap face does start horizontal, but it sort of goes down at an angle toward the bottom of the stroke. Now, you might argue that maybe the Smith Corona keycap articulation may not make much of a difference. I mean, there's certainly been a lot of typewriters in the 20th century that have been manufactured without this feature and everybody was happy with them, but I do think there is something to the quality of the typing experience when you have the fact that the keycap stays flat and it travels in an arc motion that simulates or follows the natural motion of your fingers. You know what's interesting is I'm sitting out here typing with both the Silent Super and the Hermes 3000. The Hermes 3000 seems quieter than the Silent Super, despite the name Silent Super. Uh, yeah, the Hermes has a more muffled sound. Maybe it's the fully enclosed chassis, fully enclosed top and bottom by a plastic shell on the case of the Hermes, whereas the Silent Super is completely open on the bottom. Of course, I'm typing on this wire mesh table, so the sound is not really bouncing off a hard surface underneath it, but still, that's interesting. And the Silent Super has all new rubber, a new platen and everything, and the Hermes has an old platen, but I think it's quieter. Here's another thing about the Hermes 3000, because the bottom of the typewriter is enclosed, it actually becomes a better lap typing machine. Well, what's interesting here is comparing the Silent Super is elite font with the Hermes 3000's four characters per centimeter. I like both typefaces. So the Hermes has this sans serif typeface. I don't know the exact name of it, but it, it really is very pleasing. It's good for both formal kinds of business type writing and also for letter writing. That sans serif is informal enough that it does make a good job for just about any kind of use, whereas the Smith Corona's smaller typeface is really more a traditional kind of typeface, a serifed typeface, but they're both really nice and they both make a really good imprint. Again, here is the uh, Hermes uh, typeface, nice sans serif. 
and the Smith Corona's more traditional serifed typeface. I think if a person were concerned about the longevity of the typewriter, uh, maybe the Smith Corona Silent Super would be the better choice just because the body panels are all metal. Uh, it looks like the plastic body shell on the Hermes is a little more fragile. You know, I keep comparing the Silent Super against a lot of other machines in my collection, and even though it's not perfect, I keep coming back to it. I keep liking it for a lot of different reasons, and this comparison right here is just another illustration of that. There are certain things about the Hermes 3000 I just do like better. The touch is a little softer. I really like it. But there's some things about the Hermes 3000, at least this 1970s model with the plastic body, a little more fragile. The Silent Super just exudes that 1950s metallic build quality. And with all new rubber, it's a pretty decent machine. It's really hard to pick, though, between these two. If I just had to have one of them, I think I would probably keep both as I have. And I've, I've chosen both of these machines to be in my permanent collection for that reason. Well, there are certainly a lot of aesthetic differences between these two machines. I think in terms of features, they're very similar. Full key set tabulator. Uh, these both have a the identical American style keyboard aside from this having the more modern uh, one exclamation mark plus equals. So they're both what you would call medium sized portables and they have cases with handles and you can lug them around. They both have a really good touch in a different way. Some people like the Hermes touch, some people don't. I find both machines very pleasurable to type on. They're different. I think, though, for my particular physiology and the fact that I have degenerative arthritis, I find the Hermes to be exceptionally well suited for my kind of typing. There are aesthetic differences between the machines, as I said, and, you know, the 1950s rounded shape is clearly on display here with the Silent Super, whereas it's a little more problematic uh, about the styling or design of the 1970s model here on the Hermes. If you look at, at the design of automobiles in the 1970s, it was really hard to get excited about 1970s automobiles. Certainly in America, 1960s cars, there was, you know, the early 60s and then the late 60s muscle car era, right? There's a lot of stuff to say about that, but the 1970s, I don't know. I graduated in the mid-1970s from high school, so I, I remember those years well. But anyway, this is a wonderfully functional typewriter. This is also. In a pragmatic sense, though, if you were going to acquire either of these machines, you'd probably find these to be really highly priced. I've seen places on Etsy and eBay asking five or six hundred dollars or more for a Hermes 3000, whereas a Silent Super may be a th half that or even a third of that. And the whole issue really though comes down to the condition of the machine. This Silent Super is about as new as it could be. It's about as restored, I should say, as it could be as if it was new because all the rubber parts have been replaced. This one obviously needs a new platen, but it's not that bad. It doesn't really have any other mechanical faults. It types wonderfully, but it's a different style of machine and maybe a little bit more fragile of a case. My cracked plastic cover on the right side of the uh, carriage is one example, right? It's hard to recommend one over the other except to say, yeah, you'd probably going to pay a lot more money for one of these, even the 1970 plastic E1. Well, these are two of my favorite typewriters I always gravitate toward and for good reasons. Both of them are wonderful machines in different ways. Uh, how about you? Do you guys have your own favorite machines in your collection that you just tend to gravitate toward? When all else fails, you're getting this or that machine? I'd love to hear your comments. Leave a comment down below. Let's have a little discussion about what is your favorite typewriter overall to use from your collection. Hey, and you guys stay creative also. Keep writing. Keep being creative, and stay well. And until next time, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.